Apple just announced a new subscription for its best apps. But what exactly does it include? And is the monthly fee worth it? Real fast, if you want to keep up to date with all of the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. So Apple Creator Studio is a new subscription program that includes 10 of Apple's best apps. For a monthly or yearly fee, you get access to Final Cut Pro on Mac, Final Cut Pro on iPad, Logic Pro on Mac, Logic Pro on iPad, Pixelmator Pro on Mac, Pixelmator Pro on iPad. That's a big one right there. That one's brand new. You also get enhanced versions of Pages, Keynote, Numbers, and Freeform. Individually, there's a bunch more, but yeah, 10 total apps in there, um, including Motion, Compressor, and MainStage, which are Mac exclusive. So basically, all of Apple's apps for creating. Let me know down below, by the way, if you use any of these before this announcement was made. The only real ones missing from this list is maybe like GarageBand and iMovie, but those were always intended as the free versions anyway. Like, I use Final Cut, I don't use iMovie. A few things to be clear about here. First, standalone versions of almost all of those apps will remain. You can still make a one-time purchase of Final Cut, Logic, and many of the others if you so choose. Those apps also will continue to get new updates and features as well, though it isn't clear if there are any feature discrepancies between the two versions. Some apps are exclusive to Creator Studio, basically the iPad versions of Final Cut, Logic, and Pixelmator. Apps that were free, i.e. Pages, Keynote, Numbers, and Freeform, will continue to be free. You can use them exactly as you are now. The Creator Studio versions just have a few extra pro features, usually AI and stock content driven. For example, Apple has a new content hub in those apps with images, graphics, and illustrations that you can use in your content. Collaborative documents also have higher size limits for files. And AI features can help with images, auto-generate formulas and numbers, autofill cells and numbers, and Keynote can create an entire first draft of a presentation complete with presenter notes just based off of an outline. When it comes to pricing, I think Apple went fair here. You can get all 10 apps with the added features for $12.99 a month or $1.29 a year. If you're a student or educator, it's only $2.99 a month or $29 a year. So, is that a good deal? Well, it, it kind of depends. And this is something that I've literally been struggling with. First, you obviously get the most value if you use all the apps. But realistically, you probably won't. I Some will. Some will, but I feel like most of you probably won't. Personally, I, I use Final Cut, Pixelmator, the iWork suite regularly, but I don't do much with Logic. I don't, we don't, I don't do sound really on these videos. So that already slashes the value to a degree. Additionally, many of you probably, like me, have already purchased like Final Cut Pro and Pixelmator Pro. If the features are truly the same between the existing copies of Final Cut Pro and the Creator Studio version, I'm essentially paying for the iPad version of it in Pixelmator. So if you, like me, purchase these apps, you have to consider that. Here's what my gut is telling me and where I'm leaning for a recommendation. At the launch of Creator Studio on January 28th, there will likely be a few in-app benefits over the regular versions of these apps. Over time, my guess is the subscription will spur increased development and we'll see more features regularly coming to these versions. Pages, Keynote, Numbers, and Freeform will probably start to get more and more premium features added to them. I'm guessing the Content Hub will also keep growing. I would not be surprised to see like video clips and, and more sounds and all sorts of things showing up in there. 
AI features, which often require remote servers to operate, will be added to make your and my job easier. And iPad is probably going to keep getting a lot more powerful. If right now you struggle with paying again for apps you already have in purchase, I think eventually the new benefits will outweigh that. Here's the thing. I already see all the comments. I'm predicting them now. Uh, I hate subscriptions and it's terrible that Apple is following in Adobe's footsteps. But it's not, it's not just like Adobe here. Like, I don't disagree with you. I vastly prefer single purchase options. I want to buy an app and own it. Like that, if I had a choice, that is what I would do. But that's getting harder to sustain. I mean, I bought Final Cut Pro in like 2011, and Apple has continued to release new features for it ever since. I never gave Apple another dime for Final Cut. That's insane to me. These were all free upgrades. Now though, Apple is looking to start using AI, cloud computing, and stock content that isn't really free to keep providing forever. I think Apple is doing what's best here, continuing to offer one-time purchases for the big apps, as well as offering subscriptions that make them more approachable for people to try. It also covers the ongoing cost in development of new features, cloud services, royalties, all of that. I love Final Cut so much, but I wanted to iterate faster, even if that means I have to actually start paying for it again after 15 years. But that's just me. Let me know in the comments what you think of all of this. How does it compare versus Adobe? Otherwise, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.